and uh, good evening. <coughs> yeah, so good evening. Good evening. <laughs> nice to see you all again. And Aman, I think. So um, we've been looking at uh, the, four, the four greatnesses of the Lam Rim. And the, these four greatnesses are, um, are, are what mark out the Lam Rim as being of such great importance. So they, these are, the first was that it reveals how all the various doctrines of the Buddha are non-contradictory. Secondly, that all, uh, one will take all the various teachings as personal advice. And then thirdly, one will easily come to understand the intent of the Buddha. And fourthly, the great negativity of abandoning a lineage of the Dharma will be avoided. So these are the four greatnesses that comprise the Lam Rim. And <laughs> ne so the, the Lamrim then is seen as precious because it contains these four greatnesses. And so it's because of containing these four greatnesses that the Lamrim is, is, is praised and one is encouraged to receive teachings on it, reflect and meditate on what's in the Lamrim. And Lamrim itself is presented in the sequence in accordance with beings of the three capacities. So beings of smallest capacity, um, uh, the practices that are in, co- in common with the beings of smallest capacity, the practices that are in common to the beings of intermediate capacity, and the practices which are unique to the beings of greatest capacity. And that brings us now to the top of the page four. These are the four great qualities of the Lamrim tradition. Who with any common sense would not benefit from hearing a discourse on it, a thing the fortunate of India and Tibet have long relied upon, a generous, generously high teaching to delight the heart, the tradition known as the stages or the path for the beings of the three capacities. <coughs> 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 This so, there we, um, so 
Yeah, so the, the, it's best in the English doesn't match entirely, so just um, I'll talk, repeat what Gendler says, but relate to what has been previously read out, so this first large paragraph. So here the re reference is towards the uh, scriptures of the Buddha, the vast array of teachings that the Buddha himself gave, as well as the commentaries to them by the various great masters that followed. And these that one is being encouraged to, um, with a mind of, of reasoning and logic, to uh, a yeah, logical mind of, of reasoning and analysis, to hear teachings and receive teachings, and to reflect in, on these teachings, coming to gain certainty of their knowledge. <coughs> Tusushi ane and Tambachotuke Buddha Shakyamuni taught an immeasurable number of, of teachings, and these were then later comprised in his the Sutra collection. And these were all intended to lead beings to liberation from suffering and beyond to the exalted state of enlightenment itself. This vast array of teachings then, the great Lama Atisha, the Indian Pandit, he condensed them into what became the Lamrim tradition. So he took the essence of the entire uh, Buddha, Buddha's teachings and arranged them in the sequence in accordance with the uh, varying capacities of beings, or the, th uh, the three uh, scopes of beings. And he arranged these in his uh, very brief text called The Lamp on the Path, or The Lamp for the Path to Enlightenment. So this great Indian master, Lama Atisha, he composed this text. And from his, uh, before he came to Tibet even, in India, he was um, being of great benefit to beings. Then he, when he moved to India, composed this text and taught it widely. This had a great impact on Tibetan Tibetans. And that is referred to here, the fortunate of India and Tibet. Those who came to um, have contact with the very foundation or the, the founding of the Lamrim tradition, as well as its um, elaboration by other great Tibetan masters and throughout this, the centuries following Lama Atisha. So this, these beings are truly fortunate and for and those of us now coming so much time as, as so, so many centuries later, if we receive teachings with interest and in particular with using a, 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 a logical mind to investigate and analyze what we are hearing and um, to reflect on what we are hearing, 
then such a person, such a person marked by such an intelligence and who's engaging in these teachings through their, this intelligence, such a person would, without control, be captivated by the, the glory of the Lamrim t- tradition. <coughs> the meaning of what we, we see in this uh, first paragraph, or this paragraph on the top of the fourth page, is that Buddhist Shakyamuni, in his vast array of scriptures, he presented the three scopes. And, with, uh, and, and the, the three scopes refer to the goals of beings of varying capacities. So those who are striving merely for a good rebirth in their future life, to be sure that they don't fall into the suffering of the lower realms, or those who have a far greater goal, a goal of being liberated or attaining liberation from the, the, the sufferings that pervade samsara. And thirdly, for those the, those who have as a goal full and complete enlightenment, who have as a goal the attainment of the omniscient state, so as to be of greatest benefit to others. All of these uh, teachings, um, all, all of these goals, were contained, or are contained rather, in the scriptures of the Buddha. In, in India, over, the, um, over many centuries, a vast number of great lamas uh, composed texts so as to, to um, clarify, or not clarify, but to, to amplify and make clear the, me- the meaning of the, the Buddha's teachings, such as texts such as the Bodhisattva's Way of Life by um, Lama Atisha. And then, when the, t- when the Buddha Dharma was brought to Tibet, it was brought by Lama Atisha, and he then composed the very first Lama Room text, and he did so by taking the entire array of the Buddha's teachings, which he had studied well from both the sutras, the source of the sutras, as well as commentaries to those sutras, and he presented them in the sequence of practices that are in accordance with the beings of th- the three different capacities. So he founded this Lama Room tradition through the composition of his text, The Lamp for the Path to Enlightenment. And following this, uh, following um, his composition and, and, te- and, and teaching of this text, his propounding of this text, this had a, a great impact on the minds of his Tibetan students. And thus, this is what is referred to here in, in this verse, in this um, paragraph, where it says that who, with, who with, such, with great intelligence, intelligence of a mind that is logical and using logic and analysis and reasoning to investigate what is being heard, whose mind would not be captivated by such a presentation in accordance with the varying stages of the beings of three capacities, whose mind would not give rise to great joy and enthusiasm, wanting to hear ever more teachings and reflect in ever greater detail 
on these teachings, striving for the goal of enlightenment. And with such a, a, a mind captivated in such a way, who would not want to strive and endeavor to generate the union of calm abiding and meditative insight to apply to these, um, these, this, the sequence of practices that will lead to the desired goal, the goal of enlightenment. <coughs> And through hearing, um, hearing the Lam Rim and reflecting on it, doing so through a mind of analysis and, and reasoning and, and using this logical way of thinking to both receive teachings and then to reflect on them, that one will come to see that the Lam Rim does contain these four greatnesses, these qualities we've been looking at. And it's, one won't only come to know this through being, have, having heard from a respected source, but one will gra- gain certainty from one's own analysis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now um, there's a um, there's a um, the, the verse, verses that have been commented on are these um, two here from Lama Tsongkhapa's brief Lamrim or his Song of Experience, it's also called. So uh, Jerem Pache composed three uh, Lamrim texts: the the Great Lamrim, the Middling Lamrim, and the Small Lamrim. And our text is a commentary to the to the small one. And here now are the two verses that have been commented on. So I think you all have this translation before you. Just to give a broader flavor, I'll read a different, different translation, from one from Tukten Jimpa, but it's very similar. It helps to recognize all teachings to be free of contradictions. It helps the dawning of all scriptures as pith instructions. It helps to find easily the enlightened intention of the conquerors. It helps also to guard against the abyss of grave negative deeds. Therefore, this most excellent instruction that is sought after by numerous fortunate ones like the learned ones of India and Tibet, this instruction or the stages of the path of persons of three capacities, what intelligent person is there whose mind is not captivated by it? <laughs> So these two verses then, um, the meaning of these two verses is exactly what we have been looking at. So it's like the scriptural source of what we have been looking at. Tembatan <laughs> Through it, one perceives all doctrines as non-contradictory. 
So this was, um, the, uh, is the first of the four greatnesses of the Lamrim, which we saw on the second page, second page of our text. So through um, s- receiving teachings on the Lamrim and reflecting on these teachings, coming to understand them well, one will see that the Buddha Dharma is non-contradictory and the Buddha Dharma brings solely benefit. So an illustration would be, one would come to gain certainty that all the trainings or practices as associated with the being of, of smallest capacity, no matter what um, goal one has as a practitioner, these practices will only bring benefit. And if one, for example, has a goal of, of liberation from cyclic existence, so the goal of the being of intermediate capacity, there will be now clear understanding that although one has the goal of the being of intermediate capacity, the practices that are common to a being of small capacity will only benefit someone striving for a greater goal, such as the intermediate goal. And likewise, if one has a goal of the greatest capacity, the goal of enlightenment, then the, be- the practices that are common to the small and intermediate scopes, these too will only bring benefit. So in this way, through hearing teachings and reflecting on them using analysis and logic, one will come to, come to gain certainty that the, Buddha Dharma, the Buddha's teachings are not contradictory. And the second line, all teachings arise as personal instruction. Here, they, when, whatever teachings one uh, receives, one will see as being of uh, 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 not just of personal benefit, but to be cultivated personally by oneself. The second line then is that we, we will, if all teachings that we receive, we will see as personal to us ourselves and not as teachings relevant for, for others, but we will take them as personal instructions, as advice, as spiritual advice for ourselves. And then thirdly, the intent of Buddha is easily found. So here, the Buddha has taught a vast array of teachings. And we don't have the opportunity to study and gain a, a thorough understanding of this vast array of, of teachings in the um, format that the Buddha gave them. But rather, through use, relying on the Lamrim, this third greatness is that for those of us who do not have the opportunity to study and come to a thorough understanding of the vast array of teachings, through this condensed, um, through this condensed presentation that is the Lamrim, we can easily come to understand the intent of the Buddha, or f- the, the meaning of the, Buddhist, the Buddha Dharma, the essence of the Buddha Dharma. Sanji 
ยามเนี่ยกระกระชีวะสัมเนี่ยกระกระตังกุยวะชะซาดิหากอทุกวะเดจิซานทารบาทอยาลาอะนังอะจุตังบัวทารบาทอยาดาสัมเนี่ยก
So to take an, the illustration of, say, the practice of generosity. So this practice of generosity, um, uh, to understand it well, one needs to understand the uh, entity or what, the, what generosity is, the entity of generosity or what is meant by generosity. One needs to understand the causes uh, uh, for that, uh, for the mind of generosity, what the results are from, from generosity, the practice of generosity, and the, the motivation to be cultivated for the practice of generosity. And if one has just relied on the lamrim, one will understand all of those aspects, but in a way that is quite limited, quite narrow. But if one has been able to study the great texts, this vast array that comprise the great texts, then one will understand again those same topics, but in a far more detailed way, so in a, in a more profound manner, and also a far broader way, a vaster manner. So therefore, the mental development, the capacity of mind that results from studying the great texts is va vaster than if one relies on the condensed presentation of the Lamrim. So there is that difference. Uh, and <laughs> And <laughs> Tamai in the fourth line, and, and you are protected from the cliff of the greatest non-virtue. The cliff that is being um, referred to in this analogy would be to falling into the lower realms, falling into the abyss of the lower realms. And this is um, generally understood, is done through the accumulation of great negativities, such as killing. But also, it's certainly in the, the context referred to here, it would refer to the abandoning of the Dharma. The abandoning of the Dharma itself is a great negativity, for several reasons, including that it, w it one, through, the, um, uh, through this act, would be likely to engage in, in um, activities that the Dharma would lead one to carding one's mind against engaging in. So the primary reason, uh, the primary cause for birth in the high realms, not falling into the abyss of the low realms, is ethical conduct. And this is because ethical conduct is a mind that is restrained, that is pacified. So this is a, to develop such a mind, a mind that doesn't go in the direction of non-virtue, one needs to understand what is ethics. And this is understa understood through studying the, the presentations in the Lam Rim. And it's, and it's not only through studying the Lam Rim, it's through understand, uh, studying the, the Lam Rim with a mind, uh, a logical mind that uses analysis and reasoning, as well as a mind that understands that all the teachings of the Lam Rim should be taken as 
spiritual instructions for oneself. So in, with the understanding that comes with this approach, one will not make the mistake of, 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 um, of thinking that I'm an aspirant for the Bodhisattva paths. I'm a proponent. I'm, I, I, I'm someone who aspires to become a, a Mahayanas. Therefore, I can ignore the teachings that are not explicitly of the Mahayana and the practices such as um, a, a cause and effect can be ignored. Such a person then would make a grave error. So they would not have approached the Lamrim with a, a, an open mind, would not have approached the Lamrim understanding that all instructions are meant for oneself and thereby would not have understood that the practices that are in common with the being of smallest capacity, the practices that are in common with the being of intermediate capacity, both of those are to be practiced by someone of greatest capacity, someone who aspires to the Mahayana. If, they, if someone has a correct understanding, they will know how to engage in all of these practices whilst being someone who is aspiring for the Mahayana paths. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Therefore, the wise and fortunate of India and Tibet have thoroughly relied upon this excellent legacy known as the stages in the practices of beings of three capacities. So this is as we looked at earlier. Uh, uh, many great masters in ancient India composed uh, a, a vast number of, of profound commentaries on, on Buddhist Shakyamuni's teachings. And when uh, monks, one of their many great masters, the master uh, a teacher, came to Tibet, then he composed this text of the uh, the first Lamrim text. So he founded the Lamrim tradition, the and the Lamrim meaning the graduated stages to enlightenment. And these graduated stages to enlightenment are presented in the sequence that is in accordance with the beings of three capacities. So the sequence of trainings progresses through the, um, the correct sequence of the practices of a being of smallest capacity into the uh, correct sequence of the being of intermediate capacity and then into those of the being of greatest capacity. And it's through going through this correct sequence this is the essential method for the attainment of the greatest goal, the ultimate goal, that of enlightenment. And this is the sequence that many great lamas in, in Tibet have followed, following this tradition for, that started with Lama Atisha, or explicitly started with Lama Atisha. And they too composed many texts in, um, within this Lamrim tradition. Mm-hmm. Sa <laughs> Then he gives me Lamia Rimba, the Yamnajala Mahan Suyores. 
Chasang, the Telia be Yiro Gagor, Chasang, Yabore, some Jetelian Yamnaja, Yamnajigoras, the Niki Namje, you can see that she was me Lamiribal and Yamnaja, Gabu, Yuji, Madame Bahan, Suya Mares, then Yamna Maja and the Dinit Chasam Maja and Nina, that or that is Jawa Mares and Sangura. Then Niki Namje, you then is a Hagu and Dikila, or that is Yabore, Dinam Jawore, Sajimado, and then Niki or that is Yamna Jawa Marala, Suji or Mares. The stages in the practices of beings of three capacities who of powerful mind would not be intrigued by it. Those, those who then have heard and reflected on the, uh, the Lamrim presentation that is this graduated um, sequence of practices leading to enlightenment itself that is presented in accordance with the um, practices of the beings of three capacities. Who amongst the people who, who hear, hear these teachings with, an, with an, a mind that is open and, in, and inquiring, a mind that is utilizing analysis and, and, and reasoning, a mind that is intelligent, who amongst these beings would not be captivated by such a teaching? So what's being expressed here is this captivation of the Lamrim comes through hearing and reflecting on Lamrim. And this gives rise to the, the quality um, of sufficient um, uh, wisdom to be able to actually meditate on the Lamrim. So amongst people who do listen um, uh, and receive teachings on the Lamrim with this mental capacity, this intelligent and inquiring mind and this open mind, there is none who would not be captivated by such a teaching. There is none who would be disinterested or, or give up and lose interest. It would be as if they were powerless. Their captivation of the mind would so naturally arise as if they were powerless to prevent it. The <laughs> if um, someone were to to have a a an, uh, a let's say a a, 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 a a stone that they perceived was a stone but they had some doubt and they cleared away and they investigated it and maybe went to an expert for to gain certainty and they were told that this was actually a nugget of gold then such a person of course their mind would be captivated by this nugget of gold that they that they had there would be no person who think oh well who wants this and, and throw it away and discard it with no interest there's no such person who just um, shrug their shoulders grant and throw it away Everyone's mind, knowing the benefit of what they had, great joy would arise, inspiration or, and perhaps aspiration would arise for such a person. So similarly, it's inconceivable that someone who, has, who listens to teachings on the Lamarum with a mind that is both um, open and receptive as well as um, ana analytical, it's inconceivable that there would be anyone who would not give rise to the strong yearning to give rise to these minds or to cultivate and develop the minds of the Lamrim within themselves. This is inconceivable that there's anyone who would not want to give rise to the various um, uh, 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 graduated stages of the path within their own continuum. 
Then, dead away, Chava, the Dimpig, Damba, give you sort of punching in Bo, Chochi to Duba, give us me a lambish in Bissuti, you also Zoba touching my ass. That is more. Just now, and then you get your dinner, you take in Chava, the Dimpig, and give you Damba, Sanji, you sort of touch ye, Ningbo, Chasan, so Chochi to Duce, give us some year lambish in Big, Yamlin Jedi, Chasan, Chick Sosor and Langi. ยาดําเนินเส้นเนี่ยชื่อเฉยๆเดี๋ยวนั้นสําตังเดี๋ยวนี้อันนั้นก็มีเจ็บอันนั้นย้อนสู้ไปยามนั้นชาสังรู้จ
so before going to actually read the whole of that paragraph, um, what an approach to Dharma, how can his greatness ever be considered? So now we come to the final paragraph on, on, on this page. So here it starts to express um, certainly the need to engage in, in um, the receiving of teachings and the reflection on them repeatedly over a sustained period. But even merely a single session to, of hearing a teaching and, and thinking about the meaning of that teaching has great benefit. ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、ちき、
Dini suena papa mi basa gli esseri, carsene, dini niente bi capla, non so se gli è niente bi capla, non si è sentito, c'è una che vi ho sottato di gorua, 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 che vi ho Niente c'è, c'è un 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 c'è, c'è non è che si sia detto che si è 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 detto che So one is only able to um, receive teachings uh, sporadically. Um, one is still encouraged to come because just from one mere teaching session, one accumulates great virtue. And how so? Through hearing the teachings and doing so with an inquisitive mind, with a mind that is open and receptive and inquisitive, one will, will accumulate great virtue. And one will come to understand um, the Buddha Dharma that much better understand the benefits of, of the Buddha Dharma that much more deeply. And from this, not only does one create virtue, but seeing the benefit, feeling the, uh, 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 some joy in one's mind, inspiration arises. Aspiration to receive further teachings arises. So therefore one accumulates virtue and gives rise to aspiration to receive more teachings. Whereas on the other hand, if one thinks, oh, i don't have the time to come regularly, only from here and there, so it's better not to come. Firstly, that virtue wouldn't be accumulated or occasionally coming. And the mind aspiring, based on, 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 on knowledge and, and joy, this too will not arise. Whereas if one does come even occasionally, if there is accumulation of virtue and aspiration, one is accumulating merit and causes to be able to come to, to further teachings and to reflect on them. And this is the same with the daily meditation practice. So if one is, uh, is unable, either through um, uh, uh, what the business of one's life or through um, aspiration, to engage in a daily meditation practice, just by doing so, when one um, can uh, bring about the self-discipline perhaps, or not be so busy, seeing the benefit, the aspiration will come to do so more often. And that is how we create both virtue and the causes to be able to develop a sustained daily practice. Yeah. <laughs> Lamchi Carfuri, Mano, Machuvace, Sarci, Shebene, Pando Pema, Pando Chimbio, Esore, Pains, Sosuina, Payan Bottom of Sagri, Consuina, Payan Bottom of Satu, Esore. Considering the beneficial effects of hearing or teaching the Lamrim even once, an understanding of Buddha and his teachings arises. So here we, um, we're looking at this from two as aspects that of the student as well as the, the, the person who has become knowledgeable and experienced and is, be, and is able to share their experience. So 
whether one is looking at it from the, the perspective of, of a um, student or a teacher, whatever opportunity one has to receive teachings, to reflect on those teachings, one should take these. Whether, they are sp um, when one, whether one only has sporadic opportunities or is only sporadically able to take advantage of those opportunities, one should do so because of the benefits. Likewise, those who have knowledge and experience based on that knowledge, whenever they have the opportunity to be of benefit, then they should take that opportunity and not think, oh, giving some guidance here and there is not going to make much of a difference and therefore I'm, I, I'm not going to bother. That too would be a mistake. Rather, through receiving teachings, one will develop knowledge and experience and through teaching t uh, the Dharma in a way that is unmistaken, great benefit will come. Oh, that is Angela Garasumush Tawarela, and the key children chosen Lamjin Batella, and the Indian Dennis Yore, Kishi Dennis Yore, said it. That key was children to Lamjin Bigu, Indian now, Kishi the bar, Tiki Shure, Dagazi, Denere, Kaza, Kiw Lamjin Baki, or children to Lamjin by Yamna Chevena, and then you soon repeat. Sungibusia, <laughs> Dibutikoranggas, Mano, Machu, but Shebina, Moody Sheba, and the son of Bartomeva Sagrete. That Moody Sheba, and a Sarchi Sheba, and a social son of Bartomeva Sagre, Shani, a Panto Bartomeva, or son of Bartomeva Sato Gurias. Since I didn't hear that Lamrim Kibo Children should lam you in by the Yamna Jevana, social and then Casa Chiki, you and the Bartomeva Tinu, you want to do this, Kibo Children should lam you in by the Lobson Cheva, and then Dennis Yore said that it the ancient mother that you and then you were shed. So, through um, receiving teachings on the Lamrim and reflecting on, on the teachings of the Lamrim, one will come to understand the uh, qualities, the, um, the various aspects, as well as the benefits of the various practices that are associated with beings of or, uh, that are associated with the being of smallest capacity, intermediate capacity, and greatest capacity. So f coming, and the way one will come know this is through receiving and reflecting on, on teachings of the Lam Rim. And through this process, one will come to understand the essence of the Buddha Dharma, or the intent of the Buddha. So that was one of the greatnesses. One will also come to see that each teaching that one receives is to be received as a personal spiritual instruction because the, these teachings are all without exception relevant to ourselves. And this then all comes, that's a, a second of the qualities, and then a third then is that one will come to see that the, Buddha, the teachings of the Buddha Dharma, the trainings of the Buddha Dharma only bring benefits. They are non-contradictory. And then the fourth greatness is that the um, training of these teachings will prevent one from making Great faults, not just that of abandoning Dharma, but turn one away from negativity in its entirety. So with this understanding, then whenever one has the opportunity, when the teachings are offered and one has the opportunity within one's own life to receive teachings, one should do so. And if one can do so repeatedly over a sustained period, this is best, but if one can only do sporadically, this one should still do so, because only benefit will follow. And likewise with reflecting on, on the Lamarum. If one, one will be doing so whilst receiving teachings, 
And if one can do so at home, repeatedly over a sustained period, this is best. But if one can only do so on an occasional basis, still do so, because the benefits will be inconceivable. And likewise with sharing one's knowledge. If one does so with an altruistic attitude of universal responsibility, then inconceivable benefit will come to oneself and others. And this then will be experienced through one's own spiritual qualities, growing ever greater. the, qualis, uh, the, the benefits then of, of the lamrim are, are, are to be understood in terms of the various goals that would be achieved. So the lamrim, the practice, the training of the lamrim has the quality of leading to favorable rebirths, not falling to the lower, realm, or lower realms, rebirths as a human or as a god. Further quality is that through the, the elimination of faults and the development of, of our own good qualities, one attains a state liberated from the sufferings of cyclic existence and attains the lasting, stable happiness of nirvana. The third quality is that of attaining the exalted state of Buddhahood. And through the, the progression towards the attainment of these goals, as well as the actual attainment of the results themselves, this whole path leads to inconceivable benefits directly for oneself as well as benefits for others. So this is how we should understand the benefits of the Lam Rim. The purpose of us having spent um, all this time on the four greatnesses of the Lamrim, as well as, of course, the author having composed them, is similar to the effect of um, advertising. So, so if one sees um, an advertisement on, on television, and this ad advertisement makes um, clear the great um, qualities of whatever product they, they are encouraging one to buy, and, and they make, make it so clear that, that it becomes vivid to oneself that I have to have this product. Without this, my life would be incomplete. It would be meaningless. So that is the goal of advertisers. And that, is <laughs> and that is the same purpose of the presentation of these greatnesses. And we spend time on this so that through knowing the qualities of what is to be presented, through knowing the benefits that one oneself can achieve through what comes in this text, then a, a mind of aspiration will arise, aspiration to, for these qualities, aspiration to receive these teachings. And through this, one gives rise to, to the wish to receive the teachings, to reflect on these teachings, to do so repeatedly over a sustained period, and to do so even, um, even at the expense of the other things that keep our lives so busy. So in other words, 
due to the strength of this aspiration that arise, arises within us, this will lead to us to naturally re- reprioritize our life, to take the available time we, that we have and shift the focus so that there can be both time as well as mental space to hear the Dharma, reflect on the ta- Dharma. And this comes through knowing the great benefits that will follow from this. Mm. <laughs> Just like in um, our worldly life, whatever um, uh, worldly skills that one either has or aspires to have, these only have come about or will come about if one relies on someone who's both knowledgeable and experienced in that skill. In other words, a, a teacher. So this is, is relevant to everything that in our worldly life we have already achieved or whatever um, hopes we have if we want to become um, uh, skilled and proficient in, say, a sport or um, a skill like um, dancing, then we would rely on someone who is knowledgeable and experienced in that field. And we would rely on their skillful guidance so that we could develop that same skill and quality ourselves. And this is the same with all the realizations that are associated with the three different capacities. These only come about through relying on a teacher who is knowledgeable and experienced. So therefore, in the, uh, in the Lam Rim presentation, before one actually comes to, before one comes to the actual uh, stages of, um, that are ser- associated with the being, beings of three different capacities, one first looks at relying on a a spiritual teacher. And that is because it's uh, the foundation for the qualities that are associated with any of the varying goals within the Buddha Dharma. These come about in dependence on relying on a spiritual teacher. So therefore, that is presented before the actual um, uh, trainings begin. Mm. And that is... uh ダンガロジリンギロプチンジギラブジャカルナンゴレラナチザンダラムリムデリアマオジギアネチギラムリムデラキシティニシオレエサチソンチキシソンデラキシティニヨバインザンダンガロジギドゥマセアダンディギト
Lamlim de la Nuba Tineta, Chasan, Kishit in Jubenza, Tanazuki, Illusion was top to the Koro, Koro, Yudu Kabriani, Lamjim Batilla, Tursum, Chese, Yamin Chese, and Sosinia, and the Kiawachimal had a Mukoban, Top Chen, then Telian, Kidina, Cetere, Kiawachiman of Sina, and then Nazuki, Kiwu Janjus Nikatiawachim Lam, Yamin Che, 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 Rawachida, and the Shelia. Pembe Kulu <laughs> So to summarize what we've been looking at this, this evening is that in, in order to give rise to great aspiration to, to engage with this text, we've now completed the presentation on the four greatnesses of, of the Lam Rim. So the, the, the Lamrim, or in English, the um, graduated stages for the path to enlightenment, this pr presents the skillful me means to achieve a state of happiness, a happiness that is lasting and stable, a happiness that is attained through the complete elimination of suffering together with its causes. And the Lamrim is a skillful means that leads to the achievement of the state because it teaches and uh, very clearly what are the uh, the minds that need to be adopted and what are, are the minds, ways of thinking that need to be abandoned. And the way that it does this is through understanding, first of all, what is meant by um, happiness and suffering, which would be results. And these results, the state of happiness or state of suffering, being results, they, are requ they require causes. So one then also needs to not just understand this, what uh, the happiness that we desire is and what the suffering we, f we should be free of is, but what are the causes to be accumulated that leads to a state of lasting, stable happiness? And what are the causes that are of suffering that need to be eliminated? And then, having understood the causes and the results, we need to understand how to cultivate them, how to, the path, the mental paths are, which are the causes of happiness, and the mental paths which lead to the elimination of the causes of suffering. So this is what um, the Lamarim will present to us in great detail. And all of these teachings on the Lamarim, we need to um, listen to with a, a, a motivation of wanting to cultivate the qualities of the mind of the Mahayana Dharma within us. Those qualities which will bring such inconceivable benefits to all beings without exception. And to, to do this, we need to overcome both our inner obstacles as well as our outer obstacles. So what we've been hearing here, the way that this is to be included in one's own daily meditation, is one's own meditation should include um, the reflection on, on what is meant by samsara, so um, uh, suffering and the causes of suffering, and giving rise to the wish to be freed of this, as well as the mind of bodhicitta and the six perfections especially that of wisdom. So this should be, um, in uh, this should be our daily practice. And, what uh, and how we include what we've been looking at here is this should give uh, impetus to us want to engage in our daily practice and to overcome the inner and outer out obstacles we have to do so. Okay. Okay. So we will finish there for tonight then. Thank you very much. <laughs>